Hello, welcome. Welcome back to Quito, Ecuador. And today we're doing our last video from here in Quito, Ecuador. We're gonna be moving on, moving on from Quito and moving on from Ecuador to another country. But before I left, I wanted to make a video about the neighborhood where we've been staying. And that neighborhood is Mariscal Sucre, named after the uh, famous liberator of Ecuador, Antonio Jose de Sucre. So come along and check out the neighborhood with us. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So first off, the neighborhood where we've been staying in Mariscal Sucre, we've been staying right uh, over there, about a block over at the corner of uh, Juan Leon Mera and Vicente Ramon Roca. And we're about mm, four blocks away from the metro stop at Ejido, which is like that way, south, about four blocks. Uh, so it's been really nice staying uh, that close to a metro stop. Now the metro here in, uh, in Quito is brand new. I mean like brand, brand new. Oh man, it's like a ridiculous amount of bees flying around. Do you see that? We're gonna try and avoid that. Anyway, the uh, Metro is super new. I mean like brand new. I think I may have mentioned this in a, in a previous video. We're here in, uh, was it June? We're here in June, 2024, and the uh, Metro like went into operation in December of 2023. So like less than a year ago. And I'm telling you, the metro, like, the trains are brand new. The stations are brand new. Some of them even, like, smell new when you go inside. So, like I said, Mariscal Sucre is the name of the neighborhood. It's also sometimes just known as La Mariscal. And um, it's kind of in a, an interesting area. It's uh, just south by a couple of neighborhoods. Um, south of La Carol Carolina, where we visited Parque Carolina. Saw the Botanical Garden. Uh, it's also like just west of a neighborhood over in this direction that's called La Floresta and that's uh, also a pretty like um, nice hip neighborhood uh, so we like that we went over to La Floresta a couple of times and poked around over there it was very nice and uh, like I said just to the south of the neighborhood is Ijido the park that's like right in the center of um, of uh, Quito and uh, the Ido metro stop right there. If we head out here, this is like one of the main streets that runs through the neighborhood, Avenida 6 de Diciembre, 6th of December Avenue. And one of the things I liked about this neighborhood was that like right across the street here was a Banco Guayaquil. And uh, Banco Guayaquil I don't know if I mentioned this. In fact, I, I know I haven't mentioned this in any of our videos, but I'm going to mention it now. Banco Guayaquil is my favorite bank branch in Ecuador. I will tell you, it is my favorite bank branch in Ecuador because I have gone to a bunch of different bank branches trying to take out money from the ATM. Uh, I've been to like Banco Pinchicha. I've been to uh, Banco... Nacional or um, Banco de Pacifico, like Bank of the Pacific, Banco Internacional, and a lot of other ones too. Even some like, like just like local credit unions, or like there's like a national police credit union. I tried to go to one of their ATMs, and the fee to take out money was like anywhere between four dollars and eight dollars for the transaction, which is outrageous. But right back there at uh, Banco Guayaquil and they have locations all over the place in fact there's like Banco Guayaquil uh, ATMs at the airport in Quito but um, that place $1.52 so by far the lowest fee um, to take out cash if you're ever here come from the United States and you're here in uh, Ecuador 
go to Banco Guayaquil. That's your spot to take out cash. Forget all the other bank branches and the other different kinds of banks. Go to Banco Guayaquil. Anyway, you can see beautiful views of the, uh, the mountains all around. And this area um, is pretty, pretty lively. It's a pretty lively tourist area, uh, especially like during the day. During the day, there's a lot going on. Also because um, there's a couple of universities in the area. One of them is like one metro stop away, Universidad Central, it's like a big public university. And then also very close to this neighborhood, there's a Catholic university. Um, I don't remember the name of it, Pontifica Universidad Católico de Ecuador, something like that, sounds right. Anyway, there's a couple of, ca couple of universities around here, so there's a lot of college students around the area, so like during the day, very lively, a lot of stuff happening around here, a lot of people walking around on the streets, and um, unfortunately for this neighborhood, that kind of changes at night. Um, La Mariscal, as much as I've enjoyed it, and uh, as like safe as I feel walking around here at, uh, during the day. At night, not so much. Um, there's a lot of restaurants in the area, but there's not a lot of nightlife stuff. And there's a lot of like businesses, shops, things like that. And also like office type businesses, lawyers, insurance, stuff like that. But that all closes down at night. And honestly, like after like seven o'clock when the sun goes down, and this is uh, like everything closes around this neighborhood. Uh, it, it just becomes like a ghost town and it's super isolated uh, or like it's just the, the streets are super deserted. And so you feel a little, I don't know, a little iffy walking around the streets. And a couple of the Uber drivers and taxi cab drivers who I've talked to about it, they're like, yeah, that neighborhood's a little sketchy at night. Don't walk around there at night. So if you're coming to Mar La Mariscal and you're going to stay here, it's fine. It's a fine neighborhood to stay in. The building that we're in has like uh, security, so like not a problem. Um, but if you are gonna stay here, just know at night, if you're gonna get to and from this neighborhood or you're gonna go around in this neighborhood to like restaurants and stuff, you should probably take an Uber straight from your apartment or your hotel and not walk around on the streets at night. As you can see here on the corner, there's a McDonald's and a KFC for your US fast food needs. But right across the street here is Ijido, the park with the metro station. And uh, there's bus lines that run along this street. This is uh, Avenida La Patria. Bus lines, tons of buses run along this street. So it's really easy to catch buses or the metro across the street. And then also along uh, Avenida 6 de Diciembre, there's a bus rapid transit that runs and there's a station like right, right there. Right across the street here is the Museo Nacional de Ecuador, which is like a art museum where you can go check out art in the National Museum of Ecuador. And uh, let's take a walk over here. Now this is, uh, this building over here that's like all fenced off, this is like a government building, uh, something to do with the economy, fiscal services something I don't know anyway it's all the whole time I've been here it's been all like uh, gated off on business days and there's a pretty heavy police presence um, guarding it so the street is not closed you can actually get past on the other sidewalk but um, the like the this part of the street this block basically like in front of the building is always sort of like closed off we keep walking here and we can talk a little more about the neighborhood. Like I mentioned, not really a nightlife neighborhood, but that's okay if you're not really a nightlife person. Um, but it is like a pretty good neighborhood that is surrounded by some nightlife neighborhoods. So you're close to places you can go if you want to like go out for drinks or something at night. You can go over to La Floresta. Um, that's a neighborhood that has a lot more nightlife options. Um, but the Metro stop, like right over there in the uh, like right over there right over there in the park so just a like four quick four block walk away from the apartment where we've been staying um, and that's really nice honestly
Now the, the Metro, like I've mentioned, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, I'm not sure which one, but the Metro, there's only one line, because it is very new. Um, and there was actually only one Metro line in Lima too when we were staying there, but at uh, Metro line in Lima, one Metro line is just not enough for that city that size. That city's huge. It's huge in size, like area. It's also huge in population, like 11 million people. Here in Quito, they only have like 2 million people, and the city's not as big, and it's oriented like um, very skinny, narrow city running north-south through uh, a, a mountain valley. So the one metro line running through like the center of the city, north-south, covers a good amount of the city, even though it's just one line, which is pretty cool. So this street, this is uh, Avenida Amazonas, and um, this is another like kind of a major commercial street through the neighborhood. Um, if that street over there, Avenida Seste de Siembre, is like a major transportation uh, street, this is the commercial street with a lot of like shops, cafes, restaurants, um, things like that. And actually, if you're on this street and you walk that way about, I don't know, maybe like two miles or I guess that would be what, like three and a half kilometers or so. Not too far, maybe about a 30 minute walk um, straight north on this street and you stay on it. It goes all the way up to La Carolina and it actually will take you right to like um, the Carolina Metro stop and the uh, Centro Comercial El Jardin that we mentioned in our video about Parque La Carolina. So it's actually pretty close to that neighborhood. You can get there pretty quickly. Um, you can definitely take the metro to get there quicker. But if, you, if it's a nice day and you want to go for a walk, you can walk all the way there from here. Like I said along here, commercial strip. Lots of uh, stores, restaurants, um, cafes. I also like this street because, and this neighborhood in general, um, as opposed to like the Centro Historico neighborhood where we visited uh, in our first video here in Quito and like the Centro Historico in uh, Cuenca where we stayed um, this is like a more modern neighborhood right in those old historic neighborhoods the Centro Historico where it's like you know buildings from like hundreds and hundreds of years ago they're designed with really narrow streets and super narrow sidewalks and it just gets really crowded. You're sort of like elbowing your way through. But here, it's like a much more modern design, really wide streets um, with wide sidewalks and lots of trees lining the streets. This street right here in this part of the neighborhood, this actually reminds me a lot of Mendoza in Argentina, where we stayed in the central district of that city. Um, in that, in that, like, yeah, it has these wide sidewalks and lots of trees and lots of like tightly packed commercial space with lots of stores and whatnot. Very cool. Um, but in that neighborhood, you could you could walk around at night and be a little more safe, just because like there were more like nightlife things going on. Also, uh, in Argentina, stuff just stays open later, like. Restaurants stay open till like midnight because people eat eat dinner really late. Whereas here, stuff kind of closes early, seven, eight o'clock or so. Everything's kind of closed around here. There is a Tutti grocery store here, which is like Tutti. I think is owned by the same uh, company that owns Aldi, so it's sort of like a economy grocery store. Um, and they don't have a super huge selection, but have a decent enough selection, and you can get. Most of the stuff that you'll need from right here. Um, if you need a larger supermarket, actually, let's see, off in that direction to the west, about five blocks, right? Past that big, beautiful neo Gothic church. That's another cool thing in this neighborhood. This super cool big church. Uh, but about five blocks that way, there is a Santa Maria grocery store, which um, is like an Ecuador chain of grocery stores. And then, like, off that direction, another maybe like six blocks to the east, which is like towards um, La, Flore La Floresta, 
neighborhood, there is a super maxi over there. So you're walking distance from like a couple of big supermarkets if you need to go shopping. And um, that's nice. Most of the stuff, like I said, you could probably get at that Tutti. But if you want a bigger supermarket experience, you can go over there. To walk up a little bit more here and then cut over one block or uh, a few blocks to the uh, to the west here and we'll get over to uh, Avenida 10 de Agosto 10th of August Avenue I think it's called and that's another like major transportation through through fare on the western side of the neighborhood so basically this neighborhood is like from uh, Ijiro on the south um, up maybe like nine or ten blocks north and then it's penned in on either side east and west by like Ses de Diciembre on the uh, east side and Diez de Agosto on the west side. There's a nice little cafe here. Sweet and Coffee is a uh, a chain. It's like a chain cafe that I've seen here in uh, Quito. It's pretty good actually. And there again, you can see beautiful views of the mountains out in the distance. Let's get across the street here and not get run over. Once we get across the street, you can actually see out in the distance there, that mountain specifically is Pinchicha. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see it in the video. I can see it. The teleferico lines going all the way up there. Um, but that's it. That's Pinchicha, um, the uh, very famous mountain that we went up to in a previous video, so check that out. There's a little, this is like a little um, mini market place with little market stalls inside. Didn't get to explore too much in there. But there is a restaurant right there that's pretty good. And pretty much everything you're going to need is in the neighborhood. Um, like I said, grocery stores are very close. But also things like there's a laundromat. Um, there's a laundry service like out this way a couple blocks. There's another one out towards La Floresta. And because like this neighborhood is surrounded by other like um, neighborhoods that are like um, pretty nice neighborhoods like you could go one or two neighborhoods over and find other options for restaurants and cafes and stuff like that it's a pretty short walk to get to those neighborhoods uh, maybe like 20 minutes or so uh, but if you didn't feel like walking you could easily take a cab or an uber or something um, I see cabs all over this neighborhood because it's pretty popular um, and populated during the day it's very easy to get a cab. What I like about this neighborhood also is like there are these sort of little quiet sections in it back here. If you get a couple of blocks away from one of the main streets, get back into one of these little side street areas. It's nice and quiet. I mean, look at this street. It's really nice with this little 
courtyard of whatever building this is over here. And then like all the trees lining the street. It's nice. It's a nice neighborhood to walk around during the day, like I mentioned. Um, but also, like I mentioned, it gets kind of uh, kind of sketchy at night, a little deserted. I wouldn't walk around too much at night uh, on this neighborhood. And as we're coming up here, another block up, that's the street I was talking about, Avenida um, 10 de Agosto. Across the street here, not get run over. And um, Avenida 10 de Agosto has a bus rapid transit uh, line that runs along it as well. So if you stay in this neighborhood, you're going to have easy, easy public transportation access to pretty much like everywhere in the city. In fact, hmm, I think, I'm not sure about this, but I think the line that runs along Avenida de Este Agosto runs pretty far north in the city and ends up at one of the major terminals up in the north part of the city where you can catch a bus like even further north up to like Mitad del Mundo where we visited. And uh, now it's kind of loud on the street here, but like up that way, about two blocks, that's where the Santa Maria grocery store is. So pretty close, within very close walking distance. And you can see in the center of the street here, the bus rapid transit station for Mariscal Sucre. So the neighborhood has its own bus rapid transit station. So all you have to do to catch this bus rapid transit line here is just head a few blocks to the west and you're right here at the station. And uh, the bus rapid transit system, I've ridden it a little bit while I'm here. More often I would take the metro to the places where I was going because it was easier and uh, I mean it's brand new too because it's brand new, it's super clean, it's super nice. Um, the bus rapid transit system is uh, older and uh, it works well, I mean it'll get you where you need to go for sure but you know some of the buses are older and it gets, because the metro is um, just one line, it's relatively limited into like where it can take you in the city. It covers a good part of the city, but there's some parts like further north and further south in the city where the metro does not go. And so because of that, rather than like take the metro and then transfer to a bus rapid transit somewhere further north in the city, for example, most people will just take the bus rapid transit the whole way, which means it gets kind of crowded. Um, here, look at that bus that's coming through right there. It's, it's pretty full. And we're not really in rush hour right now. This is like early afternoon. Um, we haven't hit the afternoon rush hour yet. So, the bus rapid transit I think is good. And it'll get you where you need to go. But depending on what time you take it, it might be super crowded. So it may not be a very enjoyable experience. Um, now that said, the metro gets pretty crowded as well, um, but I don't know, there's, I don't know if it's just me, it's something I like, but I like, I'd rather be on a super crowded, uh, metro than a super crowded bus. I don't know, maybe it's just all the same, and I'm just like, splitting hairs, but who knows. Anyway, if we head back, head back towards... Uh, the apartment where we're staying uh, right here actually on this street this is uh, the corner of Pedro de Valdivia um, oh, Pedro de Valdivia the uh, Spanish founder of the settlement in Lima Lima? No Santiago, Santiago de Chile there's a lavanderia right here laundry service if you need to get your laundry done that's the spot um, but Pedro de Valdivia 
And what street are we on? We are on, oh yeah, Jorge Washington. George Washington. Anyway, yeah, Pedro de Valdivia, Chile. Not Lima, not Peru. Peru is Francisco Pizarro. I remember things. Anyway, I look up. There's a very dark cloud in the sky. I don't think that means it's gonna rain, but you never know with Quito. I've enjoyed Quito quite a bit, but the weather uh, is a little iffy sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes it'll be super, super sunny, um, and in different neighborhoods, two different areas, not just in Quito, but like the little towns outside of Quito, like Sangolqui and Meta del Mundo that we visited while we were here. Like those places. There's like microclimates, right? Because of the mountains, you can uh, you can be in like one part of the city and it'll be fine. In another part of the city, it's raining. You can be in like one, um, you know, like one little town outside of Quito and it's bright and sunny. You get back into Quito and it's pouring rain. So it's interesting. Always two things for Ecuador, especially up here in the mountains, in the mountain regions where we've been. Um, two things. One, you should probably have an umbrella or some rain gear because chances are you're going to get rained on at some point, um, especially during the seasons that we've been here from February through like May up into June, the beginning of June. It's still rainy, still quite rainy. Like when we were in Rio Bamba, man, it rained a lot when we were in Rio Bamba. Um, and we weren't there for very long, so we weren't very able to see very much because it was just raining most of the time. Uh, the other thing, I don't know if I've mentioned this in another video, sunscreen, very important. Even on a day where it's kind of overcast and cloudy in Ecuador, um, you're taking UV rays, like serious UV rays. And you are because um, it's, uh, it's on the equator and the sun is super strong. So like on a sunny day, you definitely want sunscreen, but you also kind of want to put on sunscreen on days that you're gonna be outside a lot, even if it's cloudy. Just remember that, very important to remember. The sun can be very dangerous, especially here in Ecuador, when you're right on the equator and it's just much, much stronger. Anyway, coming up on the other side of that big, beautiful neo-Gothic church that we saw earlier in the video. Um, this church is really nice. It's very cool. I remember the first time I saw this in the neighborhood, it was just sort of walking around randomly. And it's like, because the buildings are tall around here, seven or eight stories tall usually, you can't like uh, really see this church from certain places until you like come up to a corner and you look over and it's like, oh wow, look at that. And it's right here in the middle of like a pretty modern area of the city. But you have this older, very cool neo-Gothic church. Yeah, super cool. Well, we'll head back, I think, over here and wrap up the video. Um, you know, this one, this neighborhood is pretty much like the other neighborhoods where we've stayed as far as like what I'm looking for in a neighborhood when I book a stay. And that is, uh, just go away. I'm looking for a neighborhood that's walkable, meaning all the businesses, restaurants, shops, um, anything you're going to need while you're staying there, grocery stores, all within walking distance. Close to public transportation, which this neighborhood definitely is with the metro and the two bus rapid transit lines. And uh, also a neighborhood that's like um, relatively safe. And this neighborhood, like I mentioned, it, during the day is very safe. Um, but at night, it gets a little sketchy. So, if you are a big night person and you like going out and walking around at night around the neighborhood, this is probably not the neighborhood for you, but I will mention, there aren't very many neighborhoods in Quito where you're gonna be like kind of safe to walk around at night. Quito, for the most part, is a relatively safe city. It's a lot safer than other cities, statistically, in South America and Latin America, uh, but 
I've been told by locals that uh, in a lot of places, a lot of neighborhoods, at night, it's just not um, the kind of, you just don't want to walk around at night. And there's a lot of places where things close very early, um, you know, seven or eight o'clock, like basically when the sun goes down, everything starts to close and the neighborhoods become sort of deserted and you just don't want to be walking around there at night. You know, my rule for South America has been don't walk around in parks at night. And that is a good rule. I will reiterate it. Don't walk around in parks at night. That's definitely a rule for here in Quito. Uh, but the reason that you don't do that is because they're deserted. Most pe people aren't walking around in parks at night, and so there's nobody there. And because there's nobody there, like, you can just very easily have someone roll up on you and uh, take all your shit. So you don't want that. So don't mess around. When it comes to uh, uh, parks, and other certain neighborhoods, especially here in Quito. Like just don't mess around at night. If there's somewhere you wanna go, if you wanna experience the nightlife, that's great. But catch a cab or catch an Uber. It's much easier and it's much safer and it might cost you a little bit more, certainly than a public transportation would, but you'll be safer and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll thank yourself. Because honestly, like, Say you spend an extra five or six dollars on an Uber instead of taking public transportation. You could save that five or six dollars, sure. But if someone steals your camera or your phone, you know, that's worth a few hundred dollars. Well, that's that's a bigger loss for sure. So I wouldn't mess around at night here in Quito. But that said, I've really enjoyed my stay here in Quito. And during the day, for sure, everywhere we've been, I felt super comfortable walking around like during the day safe um, and the people here in Quito uh, have been super nice which you never know with like a big capital city sometimes in smaller cities everybody's super nice but in big capital cities everybody's you know busy and they're go 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 all the time and you may be like I don't know pe people are just like not as uh, sociable people are not as nice but here in Quito People have been super, super nice, just like everywhere we've stayed in Ecuador. And since this is, uh, well, it's gonna be our last video from here in Ecuador for the time being, I would like to say that uh, that's one of the things I've really loved about Ecuador. And it's one of the reasons why after Cuenca, I decided to stay here for like uh, a longer time and visit other cities is because like, man, people have just been so nice. Um, like everybody's very very sociable and like every time I get into an uber or a taxi or something like that like it's very easy to start up a conversation with people and um, like asking directions for stuff on the streets asking if you're at a bus stop and you need to ask like does this bus go where I think it goes stuff like that everybody's very very nice um, and I think if that were just in one city, I would believe, okay, maybe it's just in this city. But since it's been in three cities that we've been to in, uh, in Ecuador, I'm gonna say that officially, I think Ecuador has some really nice people. And I think people in Ecuador are super nice. And it's one of the reasons why I really enjoyed my stay here in Ecuador. But um, we are quickly running out of time on our tourist visa. And we're not actually gonna legally be allowed to stay here in the country for much longer. So we're gonna have to go somewhere else. And, um, well, I was going to say no spoilers, but I'll tell you right now, we're actually going to a new country that's not a new country. We're going back to a country where we have already been. We're going back to a city where we have already been. And that city is the wonderful and beautiful city of Buenos Aires, Argentina. We're going to be going back to Buenos Aires. And in order to do it, <laughs> We're taking a flight that lays over in pretty much all the cities where we've been already. Not the cities here in Ecuador, but we're going from Quito to Lima. We're laying over in Lima. We're going from Lima back to Santiago and we're laying over in Santiago. And then from Santiago to Buenos Aires. And the whole thing is gonna take like 25 hours. It's gonna be ridiculous. It's gonna be like the longest series of flights and layovers that I've taken probably in my whole life. And uh, we're gonna make a video about that horrible experience. But even though we're leaving Ecuador and we're going back 
to Buenos Aires, Argentina, I would like to say that at some point in the future, I'm definitely going to come back to Ecuador because I've, uh, I've liked this country so much and there's still so much to see here in Ecuador. Even though Ecuador is a relatively small country, um, there's a ton of stuff to see here that I have not seen. There's a ton of places that I want to go here in Ecuador uh, and visit that I haven't visited yet. But like I said, we're out of time on our tourist visa, so we gotta leave. But uh, listen, Ecuador, at some point, I'm coming back. This is not, uh, this is not goodbye. This is hasta luego. See you in the next video.